Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one. Why Humans Remain Ununited. Written by Cal Bynes. Most species in their cradle planet will generally be a mess of different factions, simply due to geography. As time goes on, they gradually come together into singular government by the time or when they become spacefaring. That was true for everyone. Whether it hive mind, electric, mammal, reptilian, it didn't really matter. The most practical solution was to unite as one. It just worked. Except for the humans. For some reason, humanity never did this. Eventually, one faction began ruling their own planet. But even that didn't matter to them. Even as exact same political or economic structure, if they lived on the same or differing types of planets, no matter what, there was never a single group that held authority over humanity. They warred and fought over land, held rebellions, made peace and trade agreements with each other, but never united. I, like the rest of the galaxy, was confused. Humans are such a capable species. Together they would be able to do so much good. Not just for themselves, but for others. It was when I published my first book on the subject, I ended up speaking with some humans. None of them answered the question, or agreed on why as humans usually do, but they helped me figure it out. Every human that I talked to or spoke about this would talk about the different politics, saying that this or that was the right way, how they wanted freedom, or that they knew how this or that should work. Some pointed at history and how this was done wrong, or this was what happens when one group or person is in control, usually ending up being about the Second World War. That's where I found the answers. I won't go over a detailed history of World War II, but it was one of their countries starting a war with the others in Europe, and slowly taking more and more land, as well as restricting a minority group within their country. And those they took over, every country of the Allies, being immensely useful to eventually stopping the Axis forces. That's when I looked at the Allied countries, how they acted. That's when I noticed something that most researchers see as an inspiring tale of a hard-fought victory. It became what I think is the reason for humanity's diversiveness. The three main Allied forces were America, Britain, and the Soviet Union and each of them united in such odd ways. Two of them had a completely opposite political ideology to the other, later turning it into what they called a Cold War, which is a subject far out of my pay grade. One had warred with both of them, and previously even ruled over one of the countries. But they put these things aside and worked as one, sacrificing so much from each country to help the others. Britain, suffering immense damage from bombings and holding a multitude of refugees from other countries and armies. Using new technology, skilled pilots, and every individual being ready to and able to build or hop into a bomb shelter at any time, a day or night. Through this, they held their small island for an incredible amount of time. The Soviets were forced to send legions of soldiers Later propaganda stating that their soldiers were meant to pick up the guns and ammo off the soldiers dying in the front of them. But the sentiment was the same. Legions of soldiers dying to hold their country's line because soldiers were all they had left with their air and mechanized parts of their army all but eliminated. Then America, who, while an ocean away, flipped their country upside down, their people going on rations, sons being drafted, meaning that once turning 17 to 18, being sent overseas to join the war. While only being bombed once, their entire country was turned into more or less a factory for the world. Every individual helping the war, whether it was growing food or making munitions. It's even said that radio stations would even tell the weather to avoid giving any information to the enemy. Humans are machines, not in necessarily their speed of making things but in the never-ending endurance. Where a country being relentlessly bombed and trapped will still hold out against overwhelming odds. A country with nothing other than guns, bullets, and manpower between them and destruction. A people that, while not directly threatened, will sacrifice near all creature comforts and family to assist those who they haven't and won't ever meet. This endurance and willingness 
leads me to my second point. A tenant in most human governments that most scoff at due to its slow speed of action is a balancing of powers. The justification is to not allow any group or person to hurt the rest of the country with their own personal goals. This is partially due to how even self-admittedly easy humans are to convince sometimes. That is why I think humans are so divided. Because sometimes knowingly, sometimes not, humans are the biggest roadblocks to themselves. They fundamentally differ from any other species. Where we see a potential for greatness, humans see the potential for horrors that they have or could do if under one banner and instinctually try to avoid that path. Should they ever be united under one banner, I worry for what that spells for the galaxy at large, as either they will be our saviors, or the ones that remove any who oppose them from history, or even both of those at the same time. Dalgard, intersapient researcher, when asked the human question. End of story. Story number two. Two Species, One Dream, written by a glass of whiskey. Two species and a dream, that the other one would cease to be. Long the two sides had fought until the humans arrived to say their thoughts. Stop bickering at once. Can't you see the pain you're causing each other? That is the point. The two replied in chorus, more alike than apart. But your brothers and sisters, can't you see? We can see a need for them to cease to be each referring to the other, but in a chorus once again. Then we will make you see the way of peace by force. As humans were successful, far less fighting when they both prepared for a coming invasion, even some tentative attempts for a temporary stopping of stabbing each other were made, until they realized that the humans were nowhere to be found. They had been fooled. Horrified by what they had done, unable to stop themselves, after all, they had just proven that it was possible for them to stop fighting for five bloody minutes. At least, if there was a promise of far greater amounts of blood to come later. They tried some half-hearted attempts at invading each other as in olden times, but it just wasn't the same. In the end, they determined that it was the human's fault for being so sneaky. Now, they hadn't technically been attacked, which presented somewhat of a conundrum. How to justify it? In the end, the old saying, sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words are just the worst, came to the rescue. With it, they could clearly show that the humans were just the worst, as they had hurt none of their bones and used words. Some even speculated that they didn't even have sticks and stones. They were quickly relegated to a mental institution, specializing in treating massive illusions concerning sticky things. Next problem was that the humans were awfully far away, some suggestions of simply moving all planets were tempting, would certainly shorten the supply lines, but in the end, they decided on something far more terrifying, more despicable, more nefarious than they had ever done to each other. They decided to use their words. Training camps were set up to train troops in this new mode of combat. After many months, they were ready, connecting to the human's internet. They would start their worldly invasion. You're all just big poo heads, and you smell like it. Forward with their best insults at hand, they decided on a suitable target. Vorchan. They didn't know precisely who this Vorchan were, but all mentioning of him seemed to be in the negative light. Clearly, a suitable target to test their combat divisions on. Five divisions made their attack by sunset. Only one remained. It was a dark, wordy day for both of their people. Too sure of themselves that they had launched at a large-scale attack on the very first day. Only now, with so many troops strapped onto metal beds, were their mistakes made clear. They tried to contact the 4chan to surrender, but received even more attacks in return. Unable to bear the onslaught, all communications with the humans were ended. But not before all humans' attacks had been saved and categorized. A new dawn had broke and a new type of conflict between them emerged with words, and some minor stabbing for tradition. Sticks and stones might break my bones, but words cause psychological damage that will never heal. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons 
Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barkey, it's difficult to pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian.